Man, I woke up. And he's the been other, making love to her. I woke up the other night, like three o'clock in the morning, and there was a beetle crawling on my shoulder. It was the. It was. It was, was it Ringo. It was. <laughs> it was George. It Hello. Was George. And I and I, I I reached up there, and all of a sudden I felt the shell, Ooh. and so it's pitch black, and I and I squeeze because I want to kill it, and it uh. goes crunch, and then I I'm fumbling like in this stupor for the light, and I don't know what it is that I've just murdered, and I and I turn on the light, and there was this this beetle that got into my. Bed. Yeah. Mm. Beetle. Beetle Bailey. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hey, why'd you call? Yes, yeah, so I have a couple questions uh, for you about this wedding. Yes. Uh, is Vincent a post homosexual? Because uh, he seems to have a little bit of uh, feminine quality about him. Based on what? Based on the five seconds we just had him on our show? Well, no. Uh, it, it's just, you know, pretty much it's the way. Um, what? What? What are you basing this on? Uh, pretty much his voice. You gotta love our audience, huh? <laughs> you gotta love our audience. Well, it, it makes interesting conversation, and I thought you guys. No, I don't think he has like any that. homosexual tendencies. If you, you know, you, I hope they show that kiss on the news tonight. Watch the news, and then you tell me if you think he's a, a post homosexual. Okay. Well, Thank you. Oh, and listen, if you have Prime Star Channel Nine uh, WUSA, they're on Prime Star. Oh, very good. So all around the country, you'd be able to see our wonderful couple tonight. I think it'll be a sweet story. You know, it's, it, this has really developed into something that uh, they do seem legitimately in love with each other. He sure didn't kiss her like a homo. No, he did not. <laughs> he was licking his chops. You see, you see, him, see, him, that? see him lick his teeth? Talk about winding up for the pitch. <laughs> he licked his teeth before he kissed her, and then unhinged his jaw. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike. <laughs> Hi, I was watching the view when she announced this. Right. Oh, that, that her husband makes love to her when she's sleeping? Oh, good. Maybe there were some follow-up questions. And all of the women, well, before this, they were laughing, and then she just was said she had read an article about that some couples, sometimes a man will sleep with his wife while she's sleeping. Yeah. And she said, I thought it was only us, and but it was... She was saying that it was her, too. So there's been an article on it. Now, there are others. How, did she mention how many times this happens? She said it happens frequently because <laughs> they wake at different hours. Like, he has to leave before she leaves. So yeah, he's... like every other couple in America. <laughs> so he just bangs her when she's sleeping. Oh. And the whole audience went dead silent. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there, there's something weird about that. I bet. This is you know, I cool. thought I read this article. I thought, how come... Good eye. How come, like, they write that like it's just part of the article? You can you can smell the sulfur. I'll tell you that right now because Damn. the audience went dead silent. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't surprise me. Everybody started, you know, cocking their head off to an angle and staring at her. Yeah, my wife, my husband makes love to me while I'm sleeping. And then the audience, where's that thing? We have to go. Oh, the crickets. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Donna Mike. Hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> hey, buddy. Calling from uh, Wichita. I was just wondering if, um, you guys got a, any, uh, if you followed up on your cigar fiasco on the internet from the other day. Mm, no, you know, a bunch of people have faxed me stuff, though, that's uh, been printed on that website. I haven't had a chance to look at it, though. Yeah, <laughs> those internet guys, are, they're dorks. Right, okay, thanks. Thank you. Yes, Barbara, <laughs> my husband often makes love to me while I'm sleeping. Oh. <laughs> Just silence. <laughs> the audience jaws agape, <laughs> just staring at her like, "What is wrong with her?" Hello, Don and Mike. How you doing? Hey, we're doing great. Thank you. Good. Listen to uh, Hot Talk 105 in Las Vegas. Beautiful KVBC. Thank you. Hey, uh, this wedding thing is, I think is great. What you guys are doing? I wish I had someone to kick me in the butt to do it. I've been with mine for uh, I think going on August will be 10 years, and I still haven't done it yet with her. You've oh, always been, uh, been shacking up for 10 years? Yeah. Uh, listen, my friend, why buy, why buy the cow when you're getting the milk for free, huh? I just want to make sure it's right. That it's right to be shacking up for 10 years? Well, Absolutely. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just testing it, you know. <laughs> hey, before I go, uh, <laughs> where can I get a hold of this uh, video you guys are about to watch? I have no idea, sir. Um, well, I've only seen it on late night commercials. And I, is this the one where like the girl runs in front of the uh, train? No, that's the one we watched last week. This uh, is a newer, better one called Band in America. I'll have to look for it. Okay, well, why look for it? You could listen to it on our show in just a second. Oh, okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm calling um, about the women sleeping through everything. Good. Yes. Um, are, you, are you a sleeper? I'm a sleeper, but I'm at, it's not actually about sex, but I have slept through fire alarms and fires 
and I never wake up. Yeah, but you see, we're talking about falling asleep and being asleep whilst having intercourse. Right. Okay. Now, I haven't done that, but yeah, I that's agree. Right. Thank you. Right. See? It's a big difference, you know, a, a siren going by outside than having somebody actually have doing it. a siren it. in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hello. Hello. I find it fascinating. Hello. Me too. Especially with Meredith Vieira. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Great, thank you. Good. Um, I was calling about the same thing, um, and I was in a situation where, believe it or not, it was like one of Fairfax County's finest police officers. Well, we don't, we don't need any names here. Oh, I won't give any names. Okay. Not okay. even mine, because um, my, now my husband is listening to this, and he'll be cracking up. Um, right. But unfortunately, when I lived with my ex-boyfriend, um, he would always say, he would come home in the middle of the night, and, you know, from his little police shift, and From his little police shift, yeah, yes. Yeah, and, you know, just basically say... Hey, wait, hold on. If we listen really carefully, we can hear the axe grinding. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, we didn't leave on good terms, but... Uh, what a and, surprise. Yeah, anyway, it was nice to, like, um, leave him and, and, like, be in a relationship where you're, like, having sex awake. So, um... Anyway, surprised he didn't shoot you with his little gun. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it was it, it was horrible. But he would actually say, "It's okay, babe. Keep sleeping. You don't need to wake up." Yeah, but you were awake. Yeah, that's right. why he was talking to you. See, you didn't pass the test. Big difference. Don and Mike. Hello. We're still waiting for that one woman or man to call that has the personal experience. Yes, all the time. Hello, Don and Mike. Hello, how you doing? Great, thanks. You're on the air. Oh. Uh, about this guy that's uh, sleeping with his old lady while she's uh, asleep. Yes, sir. I want to know, one, is he using a rubber? It doesn't say in TV Guide, sir. Huh. Because I'm wondering if it oozes out, maybe she wakes up later. Because you wonder wait, what? Wait, did we miss a joke or something? Are we? Oh. No, no, it's, it's not a joke. It's just a question, you know. If this guy is doing this. Yes. And she's not waking up. Right. Is it oozing out later? Maybe she's waking up. <laughs> oh, I understand. What valid you're medical right? question. Okay. All right, I got you. Yeah, yeah that's valid. a good question. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. You know, if if he is, if he's using one that you know, he just he uh, he finishes, goes away, and uh, takes it off. Really, no evidence. No fuss. Conceivably, no moss. Not in Mike. Hello. Yes. Hello. You're on the air. And you know that that would answer our little our little dilemma before that we were discussing too regarding you know the uh, if it was pre lubricated absolutely right ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> we are so fascinated. By Hello. This. Hello. Yeah, I had a girlfriend. Um, we were both kind of young. I mean, like uh, eighteen and uh, seventeen, and um, she used to love it kind of like in that semi. Uh, or sleeping right before she goes to sleep sort of thing. Yeah, see, that's not the same no, thing. Not the same thing as having a woman that's absolutely out. She's sleeping. And that article, when you read the passage from that article, that indicates to me that, yes, indeed. Here is the quote again. <laughs> Among her more startling on-air admissions, her husband, TV producer Richard Cohen, often has sex with her when she's asleep. Right. I'd like to be this guy going to the office. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Sandman? <laughs> Hey, Mr. Salmon X. <laughs> Hello, here's a woman who said she sleeps right through sex. Hello, Jane. Hi. Hi. Finally, we've got a, someone with personal experience about this. Yes, I'm a very deep sleeper, and when I'm asleep, nothing wakes me up, and we've done it several times that way. Really? Can you walk us through that, please? And I think really to correct you just a little bit here, mm -hmm. he's done it several times. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Now, uh, he says that it's very good for me, too. I don't know. He says it's he's he's right going, Jane, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> and George sound, Jetson. I'm sound asleep, and I don't know a thing about it till the next morning when we get up, and he says, did you have a good time last night? Ugh. Now, the first time that... Doesn't that oogie you out a little bit? Yeah, the first time that happened, didn't you feel violated a little bit? I mean, what is, yeah. Does he roll you over on your back and... and um... uh, usually on my side. Do you feel... On, on your, your side. side. Oh, yeah, okay. I sleep on my side. On your side. Mm -hmm. Do you do you feel differently in the morning? No. No. Mm. And uh, if he didn't tell you, would you not have known that you'd been violated? Probably not. <laughs> All right. Okay. You're being, we appreciate your honesty. Thank you. No problem. We're how many how many times would you estimate your husband has banged you while you've been asleep? Oh, let's see. We've been married twenty four years. <laughs> 
Several times. Several, several times. How many? Come on, give me a number. Several like 100 or several like two? <laughs> oh, no, probably 30, 40 times. 30 or 40 30 times? 40. Okay. So he's, he's a regular. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Good. Good. Please, he's very happy about it. <laughs> oh, yes, my husband has sex with me while I'm, while I'm sleeping. i got to call Don and Mike right now. What's their phone number? Hey, honey, you don't need to cook. I brought another turkey home tonight. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. A lot of effort on a soft liner. Yeah. This is pancreas and kidney. Man, so you got your transplant, you recovered from the heart attack. My yep. God. Yeah, now all I need to do is get my vision back. But And you're blind. You know, yeah. I was going to say, don't play the lottery. Yeah, no, well, I, I used to, but I get tired of losing. <laughs> you get tired of losing on the lottery. And but, uh, you know, I, unfortunately, I was in San Francisco and couldn't pick you guys up for the 10 days I was in the hospital. Yeah. And I, I don't know what happened to Buzz. I know that you talked to him at home. Buzz got a new pancreas and uh, two new kidneys. <laughs> and, and he's gone blind. And he's feeling very good, but he, uh, th he's got some kind of obsession where he plays the lottery all the time. Is that right? Yeah, well, he constantly he, loses, though. you got to give me a call. We can get, pull our money together, and maybe we'll both win. Uh, Buzz had uh, some colon problems. Oh, okay. Well, I hope he's doing good. Yeah, he's back at home. We hope to have the microphone hooked up in his house, if not tomorrow, the next day, so he can start joining us but, on the show again. That's great. Recovery is a hard thing, so... Yeah, and uh, how are you doing? Um, actually, pretty good. I got good. out in 10 days. Normally, it's a two-week to three-week process. That's like Buzz. Buzz got out early, too. Yeah, um, I think it's all setting yourself up in advance, you know, trying to be as healthy and, and uh, active as you can prior. And, uh, and When's Rudy getting his liver? How long has Rudy been on that list? I thought Rudy was going to get his liver af after Mickey Mantle died. The well, doctors, uh, when they should have got Mickey Mantle, when they saw the liver uh, for Rudy, they just said, uh, "Put him back in the list." Because uh, let's give one to someone who at least has a fighting chance. Hello, Don and Mike show. I was wondering if you could give me that website. What website? Um, the website for the married married couple. The couple I don't like getting married. They don't have a website. I thought you guys were talking about, like, Lincoln Log or something like that. Oh, that was a site that uh, had a picture of Susan up. Oh. Uh, I don't know. No, okay. the, the only way you could see our couple now would be to watch uh, Channel 9 tonight at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Right. That's the bonus. Okay, thank you. Very good. All right, see you later. Hello, Donna Mike. Ning, 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 ning. I put my egg roll in my way. Put in cookie every All right. night. Oh, come on now. Come on. Hello, Don and Mike. I mean, hello, Don and Mike. Hey, I was like, um, make a comment about Janine Garofalo. I wonder if the only way she can get sex is like to, uh, you know, get a person to fall asleep and that way she could lay him. Hey, you know what we'll find out? I found out that uh, my lunch with Janine Garofalo has been rescheduled for next week. Mm -hmm. I was wondering so about that. hopefully the day that I have lunch with her, she will join us on the show and we'll be ask, able to ask her all of those things. Now, if they cancel that, you're not going to go off on the guy and scream because she might be on the telephone again. So be careful when Maybe. you do that. We'll see. Hello. You know, you know the guy, Mike. It would be real easy to go off on him, though. <laughs> I know. I know. The guy's like the typical guy that runs a... Uh, Comedy store. This is typical of you, you effer. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. <laughs> Hello, cuckoo. <laughs> How you doing, Janine? <laughs> Donna Mike Show. Hello. Boo, Kid Stevens, boo. He is a devil. Kid Stevens is a devil. <laughs> That would be a call about our lovely Christine. No, it's Ken Stevens. Oh, I thought they were saying Christine is a devil. No, I think he was saying Ken Stevens. You know, it's difficult to decipher that. Hard to tell. Hello. Play it real slow and backwards. Don and Mike. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi. Hey, Don, you still have a thing for Helen Hunt? <laughs> yeah, hello. Okay. Of course I do. Have you seen the latest issue of Esquire? Oh, okay. <laughs> Helen Hunt might as well be topless. You like really? That? On the new cover of Esquire. She, I saw in the grocery store today. She's leaning over. And yeah. her boobs are just <laughs> right there. They're hanging out of her shirt. Right there. Yeah, it might as well be called Helen Hunt. Look at these. Yeah. <laughs> How about these yabos? How is she looking? Uh, is she? Who is she, cares? Is she, she painted up nice or, or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, it's a glamour shot. A glamour shot. It's glamour. Glamour magazine. It's glamour. very nice. Yeah, we've got good headlights and a satin dress on the inside. They had a repeat of Matt About You with the only Matt About You last year that I really laughed at when he, when he does that Sandman tape for the kids. That made me laugh out loud. Did you ever see that one? I don't watch that show. 
where he comes out. He comes out and he's dressed as they decide. Paul Helen, Reiser. Paul Reiser, who I never laugh at. They decide <laughs> they're going to make a video for kids to uh, to get kids to go to sleep, and so he comes out as the Sandman. And when they play the video for kids, it terrifies kids, and they start screaming and crying. And he comes out, and they've overdubbed his voice, so it's not his voice. It's this guy singing like this. I'm the Sandman, and it's funny because they're all pointing at him on the street. It's a very funny episode that you didn't see your breasts in it, though. He's got nice breasts, too. Paul Reiser. Very, especially if he wears a tight T-shirt. Hello. Aren't these nice? Oh. These, uh, these are my breasts. You, you notice this? Sure, sure. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike. Hi. Hey, I just got out. I went to see something about Mary today on your advice. Yeah. Oh, my God. I loved it. Funniest movie ever, right? I have not laughed so hard out loud in a movie in years. Right-o. That's great news. And I wanted to just share that one scene... Man, when he was pleasuring himself and then he couldn't find it. Okay, all right, hold on. Yeah, right. That's the best part of the movie. Don't ruin yeah, it for everybody. There'll be more and more cheeses. You know, we would normally wouldn't let that on, but that's a, oh boy. Yeah, that's good. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Father. Hi, Lord. You know, you know what I wanted to say about that? I saw one of those behind the scenes shots. They were interviewing Cameron Diaz. Yeah. And they talked about how uh, she was so relaxed on the set and he was so easy to work with. And they showed one of, they showed one of the behind the scenes shots of when they obviously they were doing that scene and he's talking like giving somebody direction with that ear. <laughs> with it hanging down. <laughs> hanging down hey. on his ear was great. Hello. Pork and beans. Franks and beans. Franks and beans. Come on, get it right, please. Hello, Donna Mike. Well, that's it, Mike. All of the lines are clear now. They're all clear. What? Gentleman's relish. <laughs> that's funny, right? That's uh, that's somebody putting the fax machine to good use. I've never heard of that before. Gentleman's relish. In the evenings, when Meredith Vieira would be asleep, <laughs> her husband would give her some gentleman's relish. I mean, all the others I've heard, baby batter, population I hate that one. I paste. Hate baby. I don't like baby batter. Jimmy juice. Mm-hmm. But gentleman's relish. <laughs> gentleman's relish is unique. See, the thing that makes those funny is when it's one you've never heard before. And That's I've never heard it before. Gentleman's relish. Okay. Um, I want to read this letter that I received yesterday because there's a note on it that says, call me not on Thursday. Check out the handwriting here, okay? Is that Ross? Is that a Rossy letter? No, no. This is another letter. Okay, read this one first. Okay. Um, th- this letter came to me. And it says, please keep my name, telephone number in confidence. Please come to my home. I have a story you will be interested in. Please come. Then it says, <laughs> that's, that's the opening to the letter. In another matter, which is also pressing, I need a female driver once a month around 3 to 6 p.m. to get me to my mailbox in Bethesda, Maryland. Once a week, I need someone to be with me to board a bus from my home to Safeway Route 28. Thursday morning breakfast, 9 a.m. to 1230 groceries. My legs are weak. I recently came home from the hospital. I will pay for the gas in an instant. I have tried Call and Ride Metro and several other numbers. None of them fit my needs. Will you connect me with a female driver? I'm in desperate need there is no transportation. You know, I'm reading... Why has it got to be a female driver? Why are you sending this letter to me? Because you can help everybody, Don. Oh, come on, Mike. Everybody knows you can help everybody. I barely make it through every day on my own. Three, four, nine, two. He doesn't want his number given out, right? It's a she. She. Sylvia. We're sorry. You must first dial a one or zero when calling. All right, hold on. So she wants a, another woman. She doesn't want a male driver. Right, because her legs are weak at all. So she's, has she gotten back from the hospital or something like that? I don't know. What's the story that she wants me to come to her home to tell me? Right? Maybe uh, you would be the one driver that she would uh, accept as a male. She might be Miss Daisy, but I ain't driving her anywhere. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> And I want to thank Rob Spiewak for helping me translate the letter. When it arrived yesterday, I said, I cannot make out a word that this cat scratch on this piece of paper. Working on the, uh... Hello? Hello, Sylvia? Who's this? Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Oh, good. I'm glad you called. Yeah, we're doing our radio show right now. How are you, Sylvia? 
Well, trying to get it together. Would you come to my house and help me with this problem? What? What is your problem, Sylvia? How can I help you? Well, do I have privacy? I mean, no. I, you're on the radio show. You don't have any privacy. Well, I can't say it. You got a story to tell us? Yes. Well, can't you share it with our listening Please? audience right now? I just read your letter on the radio. Oh, my God. I asked you not to. Oh, no, you just said don't give your name, and I didn't give your name. It says, please keep my name, telephone number, in confidence, and I've done that. Yeah, your last name and your phone number have um, not been on the radio. I can't, I, can't, I can't say it. You can't say what? You can't tell us your story? No, I, I cannot. Could That's you? why I asked you to come to my house. Well, I wish I could, but I can't, I can't come to everybody's house that writes me a letter. Can't you share that with our listeners if it's a really good story? It is, but I can't do it. So you don't understand the circumstances. It's not simple. It's not right, simple? Right. I, why did you select me to tell me the story to? Because you look like a man of the world, and, and you're, you can solve problems. Oh, uh, you must have seen me on News 7 recently. Yes, I did. Right, uh, I can understand. The magic of the magic box. I'm a handsome man. There's no doubt about that. But I... <laughs> But I, I, listen, I tell you what, if I put you on hold and yeah. your voice was not on the radio, mm -hmm. could you tell someone on our show what, what's going on and then they can tell us? Uh, are you sure you will do that? I mean, I don't want anyone to know about it because I'm not in a position to do anything yet. You, no, I'm, I'm intrigued as to what the story might be. Yeah, sure. All right, hold on a second, please. Hold on. And after we get past the story... What about you needing a ride to yes. the to the grocery store and stuff? Yes, I am. I am isolated here. Have you ever Have you ever heard my radio show? Do you ever listen to our show? I don't have a radio. You don't have a radio. You don't have a radio. You have a television, though, right? Yes. And you saw Don on TV. Yes. Uh -huh. And I saw Mike. And you thought you'd send this letter along. Yes. Okay. Who's the celebrity that you think you most resemble? Maureen O'Hara. Maureen O'Hara. Maureen O'Hara. The right yes, yeah, she's the late, the late Maureen O'Hara. Yeah. Oh dear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No. No, she passed I, away. I loved her. So you need someone to drive you to get your mail, mm -hmm. and you need someone to take you to the Safeway. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is is anyone doing that for you now? I can't. I can't say anything. Because I'm not in a position. I have no political influence. Oh, oh dear. Hold on, hold on a second. Uh, oh, okay. Robbie, I need a cuckoo sound effect, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think we understand. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yes, Sylvia. Are you under a lot of political pressure? Yes. From who, Sylvia? Is it private? No, you're still on the show. I can, can't say it. Can you give us the initials? Are the initials B.C.? No, I can't say, I won't say anything. Are the initials BD? BD? Abdul. 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 I cannot, I cannot. Is it NG? Yeah. Newt Gingrich? It, it is worth your while is what I could tell you. It's worth our while. Worth our while. A absolutely. Absolutely. Really? Would this be like another All the President's Men? Could be. Could be. Really? All right, hold on, and um, I want you to talk to a... Uh, a cub reporter that works on our staff named Robbie Spiewak. Hold on, please. Very good. All right, Robbie. Her name is Sylvia? Her name is Sylvia. Yes, she's going to tell you the story. Why don't you give her a listen? Hi, you are off the air now. Can you tell me what the situation is? <laughs> All right, now Rob is listening to the story. Okay, let's listen. I promise you that you're off the air. You have my word on it. Tell her I swear. So she's obviously telling him the story now. Okay. That's all you got to do is be on TV, man. Yes. <laughs> That's all it takes. Right? Or we feel like a why me? Yes, people saw your, your face and she thought you were a man of the world. I <laughs> not. We will not let your family be abused. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And what is the story? Wow. <laughs> Get that net. <laughs> we'll need our big butterfly net. <laughs> Good golly. Good golly, Miss Molly. Well, we can't help you. We cannot help you if you don't. Ma'am? <laughs> Rob's don't getting yell at her, Rob. Don't you get yet? Don't, don't yell at her. Don't tell us. Ask her how old she is, Rob. How old are you, ma'am? A hundred. How old is that? I think she's seventy-five. Seventy-five. Oh, okay. Seventy-five. Baby. It's becoming a little bit clearer now. 
If you can tell me your story, perhaps we could work out a way to help you. I'm just trying to think if there's any way I could right. milk her out of her life savings. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe she has a savings account somewhere. <laughs> I'll tell her I'll send somebody to pick her up. But I'm going to need $1,000 in cash every for every ride. Tell me your problem. If you join the 700 Club? You're like the Tinkers. <laughs> you know those guys? Yeah. You ever see those guys? Yeah. Right. Now, Rob is still on the phone with her. She's telling him something right now. What's she saying? Can you give us a hint? Is it Rob? Can you give us a little? Is it Rob's, Rob's, making a, Rob's making a face like he's constipated. Always. <laughs> why? Why were the police? Why were the police threatening you? Why would they fine you? Oh boy, she's. Oh boy, I bet her house smells like cat box. I think she said. Ask her if she has cats. How much you want to bet she's got at least ten cats? Ten. Do you have any cats? <laughs> <laughs> You have three cats. Three cats. Three cats. I bet there's seven dead ones there. <laughs> uh, yes, we're just trying to narrow down your situation. Sometimes the officers gang up on nice ladies who have cats. Okay. Well, listen, Rob, you I tell you what. You need to mail that article. Can you hold on, please? Why don't you just tell her I'll send her an autographed picture? Yeah. And you know what? We have your address. We'll send you an autographed picture. How's my best that? My best wishes. Uh, we will, I don't think we can help you because that's Rob will, be, Rob will be the next half hour getting off the phone with this woman. Tell I think her I'll send her a picture. A picture is on the way, and you know what? Mike will sign it, too. Sure. <laughs> what, is there more to the story? Can you, can you give it to me and, like... Tell her to call the authorities, Rob. of abuse? Can you call me in the office? <laughs> I tell you what, Tell her to call the authorities. Call me in the office. She can't okay. call the authorities, All Mike. Right. The authorities are the same. So of course. Right. Bye bye. Oh, okay. Tell her we're going to send her a picture. Bye bye. It's 691 1900 okay. and ask for a job. Okay, Rob. Come on, Rob. 1900. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. He's a polite boy. Yes, That's he is. Right. Okay. Pop. All right. What? Anytime. Normal business hours. Ask okay. for John Pop. <laughs> oh, it's John, John Pop. Yeah. <laughs> he's, gotta, he's a very polite boy. He's got to get his own little torpedo in there, though. <laughs> he's got to get his own. We're off the air now. And as a matter of fact, you're about to be off the phone. <laughs> Okay, well, call, call me, ask for John. Throw in a God bless you, Rob. They, they like you. that. The that senior one. citizens like that. All right, bye-bye. God bless you real good. See? She got right off the phone after the God bless right. you. There you, right. there you go. All, All right. right. Hey, hey, everybody. Don't send me your freaking charity letters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the worst guy for that. <laughs> really? <laughs> All right, now on to the letter from Charles Rossi. Yes, another charity letter. Here we go. And this one says over on the top, as you can see the heading on this one, Mike, urgent Urgent, urgent. All right, now we had some contact with Charlie Rossi yesterday. It says, Dear Don and Mike, F Susan and F Christy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Let me do a break here. And then we'll come back. Get to know Charlie. And we'll read the latest missive from Charles Rossi Jr. Excellent. Okay, and then I promise, watching the videotape today, stay right there. This is the Don. I know her. Oh, oh Sylvia? Yes, yes. Um, she's telling the truth, Don. About what? Everybody's out to get her. Oh, Charlie, she sounds like a nice lady. Oh, you're laughing at her, but it, everybody is out to get her, and she told Sweet. me the truth. I used to drive for her. <laughs> you did? Mm-hmm. Take her to the store, all those good places. That's what I used to do. I was a driver. But then she said she wanted a lady, and she fired me. She ever go see Danny the Wonder Pony? She loves Danny the Wonder Pony. She does. She had a big birthday for me, and Danny the Wonder Pony came over. But I said, no, not Danny the Wonder Pony. Why? Because I one time Danny the Wonder Pony. Wonder Pony <laughs> told me yes. that he had candy in his pocket, yeah. and I reached in his pocket, and yeah. I touched skin. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. She's a very sweet lady. So you know her. Charlie knows everybody, Don. Okay, got you, Charlie. Thanks a lot. Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> Hope she's listening. Bye, Charlie. Charlie does get around. Round, round, Charlie gets around. <laughs> you want to talk to another old lady? Sure. All right, this is an old lady that's called by accident and thinks we're a bank. Oh, my God. You know how we get these wrong number calls all the time? We get them all the time. Yeah. Hey, hello, bank. Hello. Is Don or Mike there? Don or Mike? Yeah, that's what the Wells Fargo answering machine told me to call. To call Don or Mike? Yeah. All right, what's going on? What's going on here? This uh, Somebody told me this was an old lady... Then thought that, uh, no offense, old lady, if you really are an old lady. No, I'm not an old lady. Are you a middle-aged lady? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. What's going on? We're confused. 
I'm, I called 869-3557. Well, right. You're miles away. You've got to get your keyboard fixed because those aren't the numbers you called. No, but they referred me to this number. How did you get Don and Mike? I'm curious about That's that. That's with the answering service at Wells Fargo for customer service. No, maybe. no, that was our phone answering person. Somebody check the ratings. We must be number one in blue-haired ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is two in a row, right? Yes. Two in a row. So you're not with the bank? No. No. No, we're disc jockeys. Doing a radio show. We're evil disc jockeys. We're doing Satan's work. Oh, for heaven's sake, so why does the bank give you a number? Because the bank is stupid. Yeah, the, I bet the bank gave you a number that is similar to our request line number. Yeah, you might want to try that it's again. 1-800-636-1067. Right, that's the phone number to our radio show. Yeah, that's the wrong number they gave you. That's that's our number here at the uh, request line. Oh, lines. I'm awfully sorry. That's okay. Well, that's... I'm not a blue-haired lady, and I'm not an old lady. <laughs> no, certainly not. Well, bless your heart, then. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. You take care, my old bag. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, she's not an old lady. She's very old. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, Donna, no one, the, um, <laughs> the tumor show's on. The tumor. Oh, the show on Fox where they're going to show. I don't have a tumor. Where they're yeah, going to show on. the world's biggest tumor. Yeah, it's on next Tuesday at 9. Beautiful. Thank you. No problem. Bye-bye. The Bye -bye. world's biggest tumor. Now, did you say you saw that already, though, with all the I veins saw on it and stuff? And hey, listen, I don't want to keep talking about on that movie. world's biggest tumors. But it looked similar to what Ben Stiller's problem was. Oh, really? Except much bigger. Oh, Remember when I said it was veiny looking? Yes, yes, the close-up shot. Hello. And, and for my money, that's a that's a money shot. That's a money shot. Money? <laughs> Donna Mike, hello. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Great, thank you. Hey, um, you guys were talking earlier about using Yoko Ono to torture people. And I just wanted to let you know that when I went through survival training for the Air Force, during the uh, POW camp scenario, they played Yoko Ono over the loudspeaker. Did to they try really? And, to try and make us go batty. You know it's good if the military's using it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, we'll, bring, we'll bring that out when, when we deem it necessary. Well, hopefully it won't be too awful soon. I hate that crap. Oh, we just, flashbacks. we just played her yesterday. Oh, you no. know, it really would, when we get a particularly annoying caller, it would be a wonderful idea mm -hmm. to have that on tape just to go to immediately. And then, you know, when we used to go, we yes. just, it'll be Yoko Ono going, ay, ay, just, ay, ay, just hit the Yoko, ay. especially when somebody's really mad at us. Yoko time. <laughs> Turbo Yoko. Turbo Robo Yoko. <laughs> Robo Yoko. Hello. Oh, I'm Robo Yoko. <laughs> Don of Mike Show. Hello? Yes. You're on the air. I'm on the air, huh? Righto. <laughs> well, I'm calling in reference to your letters from Charles Rossi. Oh, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> thank you. I want to read the latest missive from Charles Rossi. What about him? It's urgent. I I'd like to hear his letter. I can tell you he's probably desperate for a woman. <laughs> Would you be interested in uh, Charles Rossi? <laughs> Am I interested? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. I, I went out with the man twice, and that was enough. Oh, you've dated him. Well, if you want to call it that. You're an ex-girlfriend of Charles Rossi? Oh, no. Uh-uh. No, I'm just, a, I guess, a casual acquaintance. Did, I found him to be a liar. <laughs> did he ever make love to you while you were sleeping? Oh, hell no. Hell no. Okay. <laughs> Uh, some have said that's a pleasurable experience. Meredith Vieira says that. Yeah. <laughs> and then another lady called who was married for 24 years, and she said she also enjoyed it. No, put it this way. I wouldn't let the man touch me. <laughs> really? So you've got nothing good th but good things to say about this guy. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm going to leave you on hold in case he calls in, okay? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can do a little This Is Your Life, Charlie Rossi. All right, here's the letter he sent us. Remember, this is the guy that's entered every contest we've had this week. Right. To marry a woman. First he wanted to marry Susan, then he wanted to marry, marry Christy, then he wanted to marry Tracy. And here's the letter that we received from him today. Dear Donna Mike, F Susan and F Christy. I now see they are not as serious as I am to be a part of this legendary commitment. No, I am not desperate, but honestly believe this can work. This is my last effort to be married on Friday's show. <laughs> I am asking you if I may come to your studio tomorrow. July 23, to introduce myself, please start asking females to send in faxes to meet me to be married. He is desperate. This is a perfect way to receive nude photos for your enjoyment as well. Oh, he wants nude pictures. I think it would be much funnier for both you and Mike to make the selection for me from a multitude of pretty women faxing in. Petite women only, please. 
Oh, he's very specific in that. Right. Regard. This goes from Charles Rossi, who has entered to marry every woman thus far. From our Get a Life file. Please, I am so serious. I cannot and will not crack to any kind of pressure from anyone. I want to get married on Friday's show. <laughs> I own my own talks, and I'm ready to go. I will do the most crazy stunt ever. You name it, and I will do it. I'm a big fan, and I want to get married bad. I hope Charles Broyhill got my flowers because Christy didn't deserve them. This is my last effort. Charles Rossi, P.S., give me a chance. <laughs> I am so committed to get married on your show. That is desperation. Not desperate, no. but serious. Of course. not. There's no desperation in that letter at all. Charles A. Rossi, P.S., F. Susan and F. Christie, give me a chance. <laughs> right. he, is, uh, he has been uh, in there from the very beginning. He is the most persistent. And we, uh, we had the one picture of Charles Rossi that was so obscured by the facts that we really couldn't see him. <laughs> the thinker where he had his, uh, <laughs> his chin he, he had his chin on his fist. Yeah, and then it just too much shadow, really not able to get a, a real good look at him. I don't know. I don't think so, Charles A. Rossi. I don't think you should come down here tomorrow. I'm definitely not going to get women to send in naked pictures. No, it's not going to happen, Charlie. We've got one good couple getting married, two strangers, Vince and Tracy. We're going to do that on Friday's episode. They happen to really love each other. Okay. Not like you with your petite naked woman request. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, I've been wanting to get through to you guys, but your guy Rob Spew, I keeps cutting me off. He hangs up on me all the time. How does he do that? I don't know. Every, every time I call up with something that said he <laughs> right. Okay, uh, here's a fax for Charles Rossi. Oh, okay. from a lady? Yes. Ooh. Don and Mike, I know a triple wedding is taking it a little too far, but I'd love to get to at least talk to Charles Rossi Jr. Listen to this. If I had a car phone, I would have called to be the bride as soon as Susan backed out. I am Ricky. I'll be 20 tomorrow. She's a Ricky? It says I am Ricky. Oh, I am Ricky. I have a three-month-old daughter who smiles and giggles all the time. I'm 5'6", medium build. I've been compared to Ali Sheedy. Brown shoulder-length hair, brown eyes and dimples when I smile. There's about a half hour where being compared to Ali Sheedy was actually a good thing. I like to make, not today. <laughs> no. Right? Oh. I saw her recently on Entertainment Tonight. Praying Mantis. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I'd like to make people smile and laugh, and I have a car and a full-time job. I'll only be at work till 5, then I'll be in the car till after 7. You guys are great. I remember calling your show when I was in elementary school. Oh, that always feels nice. Well, thank, thank you, Ricky. <laughs> I will. Um, hey, Ricky. I will pass that along to Charles Rossi. Yes, Charlie Rossi, who uh, just wants to soil our big wedding show. I think we've had enough of Charles Rossi. Although I did think that that was interesting. <laughs> urgent, urgent, urgent. And all the times where he writes, "Give me a chance. Right. I am not desperate." Yeah, not desperate at all. <laughs> urgent. Hello. Marry Hello? me. Hey, Don and Mike show. Hey, how you guys doing? Great, thanks. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the um, you talking about the lady before with our husband when she was sleeping. Yes, about an hour ago, right? Yes. Well, I was at work, so I wait till I get home. That I did that with my wife. You made love to your wife when, when your wife was sleeping. She was sleeping. Yes, it was like years ago when we were dating. Was it only a one-time deal? Yeah, just one-time deal. Did she sleep through the entire procedure? Yes. Well, she, you know, I start, you know, fooling around and on. She's like, oh, you know, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, you know, nothing. Let's see. She w she woke up. No, but listen, hold on. I was like, just could be. No, no. If she said, "What are you doing?" Then she wasn't sleeping. She was conscious. We really, we've actually had a woman call that was asleep when it happened, and then the story about Meredith Vieira, but. You're saying that she was talking to you, so that means she wasn't really asleep. Right, in the beginning. In the beginning. So oh, in the beginning, yes. And then she fell asleep while After you, were you doing started it. jackhammering her. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the way it always works. Oh, this is great. Oh, uh, I gotta get some sleep. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. <laughs> hello. Don. Yes. Hi, Mike. Hi. This is Kelly from Baltimore. Yes, Kelly. Hi. How are you guys doing? Great, thanks. Good. Um, hey, Don, guess what? You're having my baby. No. You were in my dream last night. Really? Close. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that I have never seen you in person before. I don't know what you or Mike look like. And, well, I uh, resemble, I'll tell you, I resemble a celebrity. Have you heard of Charles Rossi Jr.? <laughs> Actually, I was just about to fax in to say I wanted to marry him. And I'm a ringer for Tom Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike. Hello. Hey. Is this the lady that used to date Charles Rossi? No. Another lady. Another lady, yes. Yeah, hi. Top of the 
of the day to you guys. Pardon me? Top of the day to you. Top of the day to you, too. Oh, top Thank of, you. Top I, love, of the I love you guys. Day to you. We, we love you. I wanted to do a decent pleasantry. I hadn't heard a good one in a while. That was a very nice pleasantry. What can we do for you? Um, a birthday spanking. I was so disappointed. You guys were gone on my birthday, and then I was gone for two weeks. So it had to be belated. Mm, only if you really get into it. I can get into it. If, if you use the hand, I'll get into it, not the pick. pick. I got to use the pick. I'm the sorry. Pick, the pick kind of grosses me out. I got to use the pick. I'll do my best. Pick or nothing. All right, then pick I'll have a winner. To take it. I have to take it. She'll um, take the pick. Right. Is, is there a hard wooden chair nearby? Um, no, I'm afraid. Well, no. I'm staying by, standing by the window because I'm on my car, my cell phone, because if I move, I'm going to lose you guys. Okay, well, can you at least pull your pants down? Sure. And your underpants? All righty. Don keeps the pick in a case. It's oh, Terry, <laughs> Terry Valentine. Go get time. the key and unlock it for me. I'm ready. <laughs> you unlock your case no, with the pick in it. I'm not going to slam this ice pick into your buttocks unless you really let me know that you enjoy it. I'll do my best. All right. I can't promise anything, though. How old are you today or whenever your birthday was? I was uh, 24 on the 6th. 24. Right. 24, 24. Let That's me take it out of its leather case, Mike. Be that is really. Now. Look Don't at that. Look at that. It's got embroidery. <laughs> DG. My DCP. Don Geronimo's pick. Here. Here we go. One, two, Mike. three, yes. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Uh, see, a girl warms up to a good old-fashioned ice pick, Mike. I told you I'd try. Now see how Mike's soft hands feel. Oh, God. My soft dug Mike hands. Compared to my ice pick. <laughs> okay, my soft hands. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, you're cracking me up with that. My soft dove like hands. Are you ready for my Charles Nelson Riley little gloved hands to, mm -hmm. to give you a snack? Mm -hmm. What number are we on? Oh, I don't know. I'm just feeling my hands because they're nice and soft. Oh. I just put lotion on right before I started the show. <laughs> Here we go. Let me remove my woman's gloves that go up to my elbow. Okay, are you ready? Weren't you, yes. weren't you just creaming your hands? I was creaming my whole body. The late tiny Tim. He will be missed. All right, here we go. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Oh, God. That was great, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. So you learned to like the pick. <laughs> I'm not, I really don't like it, but hey. Uh, you like the pick. No, not when I've been soaking my hands for so long. <laughs> Hello, last call, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello, am I on? Yeah. Hey, listen, you know, I, it's the first time I've ever called in, and I've, I've been following the uh, the progress with the wedding and so forth, and I know you guys are trying to arrange some nice things for the, the newlyweds. Right. But w would it be possible for us listeners to, to participate, maybe send in a, a small check for 5 or $10? I mean, you've got... Sure it would. All, all we ask, though, is that you please send cash. Yeah. <laughs> No checks, send cash, and send them uh, to the attention of uh, Don and Mike. Right. Yeah, right. Just cash, unmarked bills, please. Well, that could be arranged, but... Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, no buts, just I cash. Give your address. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> North Pole. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, Bye-bye. Send it to the cash office. Thank you. We'll be <laughs> right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. Retirement. I know everyone worries about it. Is there a way to keep all the money you make? For many people, the only way they know to pay fewer taxes is to make less money. How absurd. Why spend year after year paying outrageous sums of hard-earned money to Uncle Sam's programs that are marginal at best? Hello, I'm Wade Cook. Many of you have seen The Wall Street Money Machine, my new book, and now my newest book, Brilliant Deductions. I'll show you how to use the tax laws to your benefit without using underhanded methods or questionable claims. Just real IRS laws. Call 888-275-WADE to receive a free seminar on cassette that can teach you some of the methods I talk about in my books. That's 888-275-WADE. To get brilliant deductions, Wall Street Money Machine, or Stock Market Miracles, go to your bookstores. But to hear this free seminar on cassette, pick up your phone now and call 888-275-WADE. That's 888-275-9233. 
Pam Rove of Chicago, Illinois, talks about a soft, soothing way to help prevent and treat diaper rash. I recently discovered Gold Bond Cornstarch Plus and uh, switched immediately after reading the ingredients. Triple Action Gold Bond Cornstarch Plus Baby Powder has cornstarch to absorb, kaolin to soothe, and zinc oxide to protect against wetness. I like the texture of it because it's cool and soft and, and tender to the skin and uh, also the fact that it's a medicated product. Triple Action Gold Bond Cornstarch Plus. More than a baby powder, it's medication. Use only as directed. Bob, what's new? So I'm playing stickball. I hit a long one right into this limo. Guy gets out, says he's a scout. Drives me to the stadium. I'm in the dugout, splitting a chili dog with the coach. I get heartburn. I whip out my Rolaids, and in under 10 seconds, it starts working. Then, I'm batting cleanup, and my heartburn's gone. Rolaid starts working in under 10 seconds? You expect me to believe that? It's true. Rolaid starts neutralizing acid in under 10 seconds. R-O-L-A-I-D-S spells relief. Use as directed. 98.1 The Peak. W-P-E-K. I got my own style. I go my own way. I put my faith in Chevy and love Chevrolet. The two-day used car extravaganza is going on now at Love Chevrolet. Come by today and see one of the largest selections of used vehicles in the upstate. We've brought in additional vehicles from our other dealerships across the state for this special sale. We've got Ford, Toyotas, Mazdas, Buicks, you name it, we've got it. But it's all for a limited time only. Don't miss this special opportunity to take advantage of the selection and the unbelievable low prices. We have acquired low financing programs for this sale with approved credit. We've got something for everybody. So don't miss this two-day used car extravaganza at Love Chevrolet. Come see why so many people have put their faith in Chevy and Love Chevrolet for over 35 years. Put my faith in Chevy and Love Chevrolet. This is meteorologist Alan Archer with your upstate weather from the peak. All right, shower and thunder shower activity is continuing to increase now and coming to us here from the west and northwest about 15 miles now. Notice skies around Greenville, Spartanburg, and Anderson will stay partly cloudy to cloudy run on through Friday. And we'll follow up with a 30% chance of showers and thunder showers building during the afternoon and evening hours. Some heavy with overnight lows in the low 70s and daytime highs in the low 90s. The rain probability again 30%. Would you dim the lights, please? And you're going to go, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be over here getting ready to puke, but we're both staring at it, folks. Okay, today's video. Look at me pulling up a chair a little closer. Today's video is not banned from television. This is banned in America. One of those tapes that uh, they advertise on TV. All right. And we're going to watch it now. Oh. We've heard that there's some good stuff. Here's the, there's the, the front shot banned in America. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Enjoy today's movie. Warning. What you are about to witness will shock you. I'm going to fast forward past this. All right. Okay. Here we go. La, la, la. There it goes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. As a distraught man dying of AIDS decides to take a stand against HMOs and medical mistreatment. Okay. Let me pause it here. Mike, I believe this is the um, the fellow that blew his brains out oh, okay. recently right. on the L.A. freeway. In L.A.? Mm -hmm. Right. And this is what they didn't want you to see, right? This yes. is when he lit the car on fire? I think so. He's in a pickup truck, sitting on the side of the freeway, and there it goes. Firebomb. Okay, now, is he's not in there now? In the cab of a car? Oh, yeah, yeah, here he, he comes. He had planned to die in his truck, along with his dog, but that plan backfired. He was on fire there, but he ran out of his car. He made this it. This is okay. what you saw live, isn't yes, it? Yes, correct. And then later, all the LA TV stations apologized for, for running this. See, there he is sitting in his truck. It's an instant replay now. Great music to watch a guy catch himself on fire with. Hey, so far compared to the other one. Oh, there it is. There's the, there's the uh, truck catching on fire. So far, the other one's a lot better. All right, hold all right. on. Let's fast forward a little bit. La, 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 la. There he is laying on the ground with his pants off. Cause, see, because his pants were on fire. Right. If I'm the cops right now, I'd just shoot this guy. So, hey, what's the point? Oh, no, he's going to jump off the bridge. Hold on a second. Is that what he did? No. Oh, come on. He's just running around now. Here he goes back to his car with his gun. And now they're going to shoot him. Now they're going to shoot him when he pulls out the gun. 
Oh, oh there man. it was. Okay. And you saw that. I saw that live. Happened. Right. Okay. Watch it again. Here we go. This is the guy. He's got his car out. He's got the gun out of the car. Picks up the gun, and the cops blow his head off. Well, the cops didn't do that. He did that to himself. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. What did I say? The cops. So you, I remember when you came in when you had actually, and then they spent the rest of the day apologizing. Right. Okay, watch it again. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did I say the cops did that? No, he's setting he does the, that to himself. He's setting the gun up right there to shoot himself. Oh. Blew the top of his head clean off. No wonder they were apologizing about that. Man, why apologize? No, no wonder. There's I mean, some great I mean, ratings there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a trail of blood. Okay. They could use some better narration on this, though. I'm fast forwarding now, going to the next exciting piece of tape. Oh, that's still the guy's car. Same thing. Oh, that's they the get a lot thing. of mileage out of this one. They did have the nice shot of the guy blowing his head off, though. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Rewind, rewind. Let me rewind. Do, 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 do. This looks like a hostage situation. Yeah. As a negotiator pleads with the crazed gunman, a sharpshooter lines up and takes. Hey, Mike, hold on a second. Hold on a second. The guy that brought us the tape is on the phone, and he wants to walk us through it. Okay. You remember Luigi? Yeah. Hey, Luigi. Hey, what's up? How's hey, that? yeah, I would appreciate if you'd walk us through this tape. Okay, this hostage situation right now, if you forward it up, gonna, he's, the, the guy's going to be smiling a little bit. As soon as you see uh, these guys in a car, actually a police car actually moving, yeah, stop it right there and play right there because that's when they shoot him. Oh, my God. All right, okay. All right, good. Here we go. All right, he's fast-forwarding it. All right. He still got the gun around this lady's head. Now there's the SWAT guys, right? Guys in black. What, Luigi? The guys in the black. Yeah, guys in black SWAT suits. About five yeah. seconds, ten seconds after that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> They're gonna shoot him in the head. Oh yeah. All right. Well, he showed a car again. We should have to wait a long time for this. Oh. 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 Hey, oh. who wants to see it again? No, they right. show it in super slow mo. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Well, wait when they put him in the ambulance, you can see his face hanging off. All right, hold on. Hey, you're right, Luigi. All right, here it is in slow motion. Oh, oh they got him. Oh. They saved her, though. Hey, where'd you get this tape, Luigi? Just at a video store up in Herndon. Oh. Boom. What's next? Um, camera, you have to tell me what's next. I'll tell you whether it's good or not. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me fast forward here. And the next one is, looks like a high-speed chase. Oh, uh, they show that all the time on America's, you know. Police well, chases? Yeah. Okay. Results. What happened? It looks, it's a... Uh, the one where he crashes into the Jeep and pretty massive wreck and the Jeep's pretty tore up. Oh, the next right. couple of scenes after that, they're just going to show like a lot of dead people from drunk driving in their cars. All right, I'm going to fast forward past all that. Yeah. What's the highlight of this tape, Luigi? The most, re uh, there's two, uh, there's two highlights. One, the guy that jumps from about 15 stories up and takes a nice bounce once he hits the concrete. Uh -huh. I'd like to see that. Um, also, the guy with the big, big testicles. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that I really want to see. <laughs> you were right about the narration. It's really stupid because I go, this guy has, you know, the largest testicles. Is this the same people who, uh, who, who made the band from TV? Is it the same kind of people? I have, I have no idea. It's just really, some, some things are really cheesy. Like he goes, I bet you that drives this guy nuts. And like, yeah. All right, with his testicles and all, I got it. All right, now we're looking at footage of, of people who were killed in a car crash. We're just Four fast. Past that. Yeah, I'm fast-forwarding. Our, our fast-forward moves kind of slow. Mike, you will definitely, if you lose your lunch, you'll definitely do it if, when you see the uh, African getting his... Uh, oh, I'm not, oh, man. Oh, his, okay, hold on. His, actually, his feet. And all right, this looks like an execution off. now. Should we watch this, the execution? What? Oh, actually, no, that's smuggled out of Iraq, and they just, there's a better execution up ahead. <laughs> better. Thank you. A better execution. <laughs> Our tour guide, Luigi, walking us through the tape with Band in America. <laughs> Excuse me. So, we're just fast-forwarding now through the Iranian... Iraq. I'm sorry, Well, same Iraq. difference. Same thing. 
Whatever. <clears throat> you know. What are they doing there? What Band am- in America, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what am I fast-forwarding past, Luigi? Uh, so, they were Kurdish rebels captured by the Iraqs. All right, now it looks like Just a bunch of... Out of committing suicide. A bunch of cops who are trying to get a guy not to commit commit suicide. Is there one guy? Is there one guy and two cops? In yes. Front of him? Yeah. What's yes. that? Although they take him out. They shoot him. Yeah. They, he makes him. He makes a move for a gun. One, one, the funny thing. Right. Okay. Hold on. Here it is. Gets his death wish. Uh, mm, that wasn't that great. No. But the funny thing about that was that cop that ran up to him almost got shot. You can see him jumping around the bullet. Oh, I did see the cop jump. So what he was trying? He he had a gun there and he reached for it to go for them. Yeah, well I guess and they shot him. Oh, now what guy. is this? This is, looks like in the middle of a soccer field. Oh, that's nothing. Four past that, it's just a bunch of guys trying to. That guy was actually stabbed and beat a couple times. And There's some big fat guy running across the middle of a soccer field and like a million guys are chasing him. I think what's coming up next is is good. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. Boy, I'm glad you're on the line, Louis. This is like somebody's in a living room. <laughs> Wait till, wait till you see the homemade video of uh, the two uh, ladies fighting at a picnic, and also one lady just drops her clothing. All right, hold on. Instead, this is their punishment. Oh, is this the guy that's punished for stealing? Is it like a black... Is, is it... Yeah, it's a couple of black guys. It gives a whole new meaning to the term five-finger discount. Oh! Oh, they just cut off that guy's hand! Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I got to pause it for a minute. I told you that was so nasty. This is a guy that was shoplifting. They cut off his hand in the public square. Oh, my yeah. God. All right. Let me rewind it. And look how easily his hands come off. Yeah, let me see it again. Okay, hold on. Wait a minute. And, all right, let's watch it. Here we go. And roll. It gives a whole new meaning to the term five-finger discount. That almost looks fake. Yeah, it really does. How come no blood and stuff was shooting out of his out of his arm there? I don't know, but that. Now, what are they doing to this guy on the ground? Cutting off his foot and his hand. Uh oh, wait, was. Uh oh, and ah ah ah! They just cut a guy's hand off. Oh my god! <laughs> and his foot. What if you're caught for adultery? Uh, I I hate to see what they cut off then. Oh, my God. All right, Luigi, what's next? Uh, You shouldn't be coming up. uh, The scrotum guy, uh, actually, if you come to these guys, just like Indians or whatever, that are smoking something. Oh, we've seen this one before. These are guys throwing firebombs off the top of a building. That's the one we saw on the last tape. Korean? Yeah. Wait till you see this guy get sprayed with Yeah, the guy gets, the guy catches Uh, on fire. We've seen this one one. before. All right, let me... Pause this for a second. Uh, Luigi, yes. we're going to do a break. What will you be walking us through in our next segment? Uh, the guy jumping from 15 stories up. Uh, the large testicled man. Good. And these are all worth our viewing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Luigi. Hey. Luigi. <laughs> Luigi, our tour guide. Hold, <laughs> hold on, please, and we'll be right back to finish watching this great movie. <laughs> this is the dark. Movie. <laughs> Our Dialing for Dollars movie. Oh God. Uh, this call... Are you, he was almost on one of these tapes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Yeah, come on. You're on the air. I, I'm sorry. Um, turn the radio down. Uh, do you guys need a veil? My wife makes veils. I'd love to give you one. Gee, that's... That's so generous of you. A whole veil? A veil, yes. A they're, whole piece of lace. They're normally $150 to $1,000 each. Oh, right. now we've. I'm sorry if we offended you. Is it, is it as exciting as a limo bus? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, does, doesn't the veil normally come with the gown? No, no, it's always an extra option. Uh, and like I say, they range in... Hey, you know, if we don't get a dress and she's like wearing something, maybe she'd like to have a veil. I can maybe have a so. veil made with the white lace going all the way down to cover her if you want. All right, sure. Hold on a second. Super. All right, yeah. Well, all right. I think you're absolutely right, Don. We have to kind of uh, take what we can get at this point. Right. We, we send no one away. We can take the veil. We can take the limo bus. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it just sounds funny. It's a limo bus. <laughs> yes, congrats. Hey, now, Bob and Carol, here's a prize selected especially for, for you. you. Oh, it's the limo bus, Vincent. It's a Speed Queen limo bus. Hello. <laughs> and Don and Mike. Hello. Hi. Don and Mike, hey, yeah. I can't believe you haven't had more guys call in about this, uh, you know, doing the thing with your girlfriend or wife while she's sleeping. Sir, that was hours ago. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. 98.1. 
All right, me and my buddy are both sitting here talking about it. He was in the Marines, I was in an Army, and we we're both enlisted. The sergeants are the enlisted guys. You know, they've been through it all, rough and tumble. They got scars and talk funny and smoke cigars and stuff. Yeah. Tom Hanks is an officer in this movie. Oh, he's an officer. Oh, yeah. Officers go to school to learn how yeah, to Yeah, okay. Fancy lad, okay. If, if you see, the movie works already more for me than if he was a sergeant because he's, he's you a know, captain. He's a fancy lad. Yeah, he, he you know, just went to West Point. Lovely. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very forced, very forced. Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Yeah. All right, goodbye. Well, we're Shrimpin' on. is tough. I urge everybody, you know, you got plenty of time to go see this Saving Private Ryan. It's going to be the movie that's out all summer long. Yeah, don't go see it tomorrow night. Go see the Mary movie. <laughs> yeah. Go see something about Mary. Don't go see Private Ryan tomorrow night. All right, here's the latest on the wedding. Are you ready for this? All the humanity, all the sin. Do you believe it? This blew me away. After everything that we went through with Susan and then with Christy. With Christy. It came to Terry yesterday. Tracy. I'm sorry, Tracy. There was always Tracy, and I think it's a good thing that you're already blocking her out of your mind. Tracy. Tracy with an I. Yes. She came down. She met Vincent. Right. Remember? Remember how in love she was talking to him on the telephone and how yesterday they had their embrace? Anybody that watched Channel 9 last night saw them actually meet? I was taken in by these two. I really thought that there was real electricity, real magnetism between the two of them. Little did I know that the whole thing, at least on Tracy's part, was just a, a crock. <laughs> yeah. She backed out. Oh, bummer. Now, we're trying to get her on the telephone so we can at least get an insight into what happened. Here's what she told our producer, Charlie Broyhill. Oh, here he is right now. Hello, Charlie. Hello. My attempts to reach Tracy are, are not working. So Tracy has it's, just it's completely bailed. It's not surprising. Right. That's a pisser. Right. Listen, here's what she told Broyhill earlier today. She said that because of her job, she would not be able to marry Vince on the show. And, you know, now this is being passed on to me third hand through Broyhill. I said... What does she mean? So we called her back, and according to her, her boss said that if she gets married in this fashion on the show, he will fire her. Well, a boss can't do that. Right. So, you know, my answer was, well, call her back and say, that's ridiculous that if a boss is going to fire you over this, you could sue him. This is America. You could sue him and you'd win. He's yeah, wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why we think that the whole story that she's come up with as to why she doesn't want to do this is is bull ass. That is such a dry... If that's the only reason... You know what it is? It's the curse of TV. All three of these yep. women, yep. every time they've been on TV, they've backed out. They bail as soon as they uh, they hit the airwaves on TV. They're out of here. So she's out, right, as far as we know? Is she, that, she's done. She's definitely... And you talked to her, and she's yeah, like, there's she's just hiding. no way this... And so she's just totally she's incommunicado. That sucks. You that know, totally sucks. That sucks when they come in here, and they look us in... And especially after being beaten back twice. She was the one. You made it so clear to her how burned we were and how upset we were and she sat there and smiled and then when Vincent showed up, I swear to God I was looking at these two and I said these That's kids the guy I want to talk are to. in love. Alright, we're going to get Vincent on the phone. Oh man. But listen, I am at the end of my rope with this. I know and I don't blame you this. Bit. This was not our idea. Nope. This was something that was brought on by Susan. It's been great to have a wedding here Bully. tomorrow. Bully! Now, I was forced today. Yes. I was forced to play my trump card. Oh, no. Backed against the wall. Oh, what did you do? I instructed Charles Broyhill to call Charles Rossi Jr. Oh! Charles Rossi Jr. is the fellow who has bid unsuccess unsuccessfully to marry the three women who have all backed out. No one has had more enthusiasm than Charles Rossi. He has written, he has sent faxes, he has sent letters, he has sent flowers. He wants to get married on the show tomorrow. He does. He seems probably out of all the faxes we receive for all three women, he is the singularly most desperate. So, he will be getting married tomorrow. I told the people from Channel 7 and the people from CNN right. that they shouldn't cancel their camera shoots because mm -hmm. the worst thing that's going to happen is tomorrow at 5.30, they're going to see a wedding party. Right. They're going to see a tent. They're going to see decorations. They're going to see a guy in a tuxedo waiting for anybody to marry him. You know what we need to and do? And that may be how this all ends with, with Charles Rossi standing at the altar. <laughs> but I think... Mm -hmm. There's a woman out there. Now, I know that there was one woman yesterday yep. when we were busting 
Charles Rossi's balls. Right. That sent a fax in, and she said, hey. I'll marry him. I want to marry him. And you know something? We foolishly threw that away, Mike. If necessary, we'll have to sell Charlie Rossi a little bit. And we can sell anything on this show, and we can certainly sell Charlie Rossi. Not money-wise. But, no. I mean, he, he's going to be in here. He's on his way in right now. When I say sell him, I just say, you know... Talk about his good traits. Oh, my God. Well, we've never met Charles Rossi That's Jr. Right. Let's not jump to conclusions. He's on his way down here right now. Surely. You know, at least he's the one guy in all of this that really wants to get married on tomorrow's show. Yeah, until he gets on TV, you know, and then he'll run away, too. I was thinking we could drag this out, and I'm mm -hmm. sure we could wait and get more people that are into it. No, this is all set. For tomorrow. First, it was going to be a wedding for Susan. <laughs> then it was going to be for Susan and the other girl. Right. Then it was going to be for the other girl and the other girl. I don't care if Charles Rossi is standing there tomorrow with a mannequin. Yeah. He's getting married on this show tomorrow. Do you remember on the show yesterday when the, those There's two a kids, woman for him out there, Mike. Do you remember when the two, uh, Tracy and Vincent, were standing there and you said, I want to do it right now. I want to do it right now. That was it. Should have done it. You had that hunch, didn't you? Right. Never, <laughs> never go back on your first instinct. <laughs> that's, that's where I've made all the mistakes in my life, where I've had a first instinct right. and I have gone the other way. So hopefully by the end of the week there will be a new Mrs. Charles Rossi now. I hope so. Um, while we work our way towards that, yes. let's talk now to the man who was left at the altar. Oh, dear. Last night, if anybody saw Channel 9... This guy, Vince, is a sweet guy, man. He came bounding into the studio. You seem so happy, Vincent. Oh, thank you. He got down on his knee. He licked his teeth before he kissed his bride-to-be. And he planted one on her. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know anybody that didn't think that this thing was, was a go. Listen, what did she say to you, Vince? Um, basically, uh, some, similar to what you guys said. Plus, she said uh, she was having a little cold feet, and I, I told her, you know, if you don't feel like you want to do it, you know, I'm not going to force you, you know, but, um... Were you, did you, uh, were you completely shocked? Was this completely out of left field? Based? Yeah, sort of. It was out of left field, you know, it, um, but, you know, we, we talked some last night, and, and, you uh, um, we, no, we have a lot in common, and you know, I think she's a, a great person. Doesn't anybody out there have the balls to do what they say that they want to do? I don't know. And now, yeah. are you guys mm -hmm. going to continue to see each other, do you think? Uh, I hope so. You know, no, I um, would ban, I'm going to ban that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got my number... Vince, I'll find you... Listen, we'll find you a better woman. <laughs> <laughs> you just hang out here, Vince. Let me get Charles Rossi married, and then we'll find you a woman. <laughs> it's oh, it's vendetta time. Justice. You're going to be the man, Vince. All right. You the man you left at the altar. You must be very, very depressed. Actually, I'm not. You You're know? not? Okay, well, that's good. Because I... Because, you know, I met someone I never would have, but, and it was great coming down there yesterday. And That's just a pisser, man. That's got a great attitude she, about it. I wish we could maintain that attitude, but no, <laughs> we're pissed. Well, see, okay. I, was only, I was only left once. You guys were left three times. Yeah, we've been left three times. That's what it is. We have been left on. And we haven't asked for it. Mm -mm. We're just left to clean up the emotional mess. These women <laughs> come into our lives, <laughs> and then they leave as soon as we get to know them. Uh, I, I hope your ex-wife at least has the guts to call in to the show today. <laughs> you know what I mean? That won't be Do you remember her? She yeah. was the one that, from the very beginning, when, when Susan looked like she'd be shaking, she called and said, I want to do this. And we, we made her way. Right. Then she called back and said, no, I really want to do this. You know this. You can trust me. I'm serious about this. There's so much checking and double checking. You know, hey, really? Is this guy okay for you? Really? Do you really? Huh? Really? 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 And yes, 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 yes. Uh, but I guess, you know, there's one part of me. You're going to get mad at me now when I say that. There's one part of me that says it's that pressure, that pressure to, to be happy and to say, yes, this is a great thing. And then as soon as the glare, as soon as the spotlight leaves, you're there in the car driving home with your own thoughts and, uh, you know, now, you want to puke. Yeah, you're right. I don't want you to say that. I understand. <laughs> did she tell you that she vomited in her car last yeah, night? she did. She said, uh, actually, that uh, she told me she got sick three times. I said, well, you know, if it's, if it's upsetting you that much, don't worry about it. As far as I was concerned. No, you didn't even fight for her hand, Vince? Well, I, I, because... Uh, I understand. We, I understand. You know, it's like she kicked you in the groin. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? You come down and through the studio with the flowers, ready to marry her? You got a great attitude, Vincent. Well, you really do. You got a wonderful attitude. Thank you. You know, you know who knows, Vince? I don't know how you feel about being married tomorrow, but... Perhaps if there's a woman that saw you on Nitwitness News last night on Channel 9, 
Maybe it could still happen for you, big guy. Maybe. There you go. That's the right attitude, Vincent. Well, you demand, Vincent. Well, thank you. All right, go clean your Slurpee machine. <laughs> Rotate your hot dogs. And she That's didn't give right. you anything else. She didn't. You can't give us any other insight. Like she didn't say anything else about you or about. No. 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 It, the, the way it seemed to me was mostly nerves and some about the job too. So it's like you know, well, if it's that big of a deal, I'm not that worried about it. You know, this is a woman who practically lived in our studio for two days in a row right. for 48 hours when the job, I don't believe, was even mentioned. Well, that's bull -ass what she said about her job. First, she told Charlie it was something that she had some security clearance job, right? And then she said that it would be okay if she got married, just not if she got married in this fashion on our show that she'd lose her job. That which, doesn't make any sense. Which is bull crap. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Vince. No problem. You Hang in there, man. Guys. Hang in, Vince. All right. You want some Taco Bell stuff or something? Yeah, hey, that'd be quite the, the, the head wobbler for the window in there. Yeah, let me give you that Taco Bell prize pack. All right. That's a year's worth of gorditas for you. Sweet. Hold on a second, Vince. He's a good guy. He's a sweet guy. I feel bad for him, He's a man. sweet guy. He seems to be... There's no anger there. And now I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start. God, my mind starts going no. into these evil things where they got together. You know, no, you know what it is. Why with should him? we rush into something when we can have a real courtship now that no. we've met each other? You know, I, I think. Listen, that guy feels bad, man. That guy's trying to put the best possible face on it. This woman is not used to that. See, when something like that happens to me, I'm used to putting the worst possible face on it. Well, listen, this this woman embarrassed him. Mm -hmm. All right, this is not much of a national show, but let's face it, this is a national show. Yeah, she embarrassed him on a national forum, man. They were hugging. They were happy. They they were talking two and a half hours here, one hour there. They were, you know, we were we were talking about, boy, can you kids stay away from each other? And then she boots oh, three on, times in her car. And on TV, they said they're going to think about having children. Oh, man. He's just trying to put the best possible spin on it. I hope so. Let me make sure. Vince? Yeah. Vince, is that right? You're just trying to put the best possible spin on this? Um, slightly, but, you know, I, I really am not that upset about it. You know, it, it, I've had things happen in the past, and, you know, I've just learned that always put the best possible spin because if it don't kill just you... To, just so I can have peace of mind, and I know this is probably not even true, this probably never even happened, but you guys didn't have, like, a conversation oh. along the lines of, hey, we won't do it on the radio, but, you know, let's let's date and let, then let's have a proper wedding uh, in six months if things work oh, out. Oh, no, nothing, nothing that far. We, nothing like that. No, it was it was like, well, we think each other's great, and you know, let's, let's still talk and, and be friends, but it's like... No, no, no. No conversations. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't, hey, let's Let's no, no, I, I forbid that. I ban that. No conversations. We'll find you a woman, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need her. You'll never be able to trust her the rest of your life. That's right. Yeah. She already left you down once already. I mean, she let you down once already. She left you once already. You just knew her and she left you. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> oh, Vince. Oh, you poor man. Hold on, please. All right. All right. All right, he's not that upset. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be that upset, and good for him. Uh, he's he's a better person than we are. So, if there's a gal out there mm -hmm. who has heard Vince on the show, or maybe seen him on the cable, yeah, and you'd be interested in uh, marrying Vince, you can you can call us on our toll free line. There's going to be, as you said earlier, oh, there will be a, be a wedding. wedding tomorrow. There's going to be a wedding. Uh, this guy, Charles Rossi, is on his way down here right now to sell himself. And maybe there's a woman out there mm -hmm. who's already heard the magic phone calls that we've had from Charles Rossi over the last week. Yeah, and you know something? After about five minutes, he will officially be a radio personality. Mike, I got the feeling this is him walking in the building Charlie right Rossi now. coming in right so. now? I think. So. How's the, he look, Don? Like a Charlie Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> no, he looks like uh, he could be one of the sales slugs. Good, okay. If that's Charles Rossi. Looks like a single successful guy. Let's find out. Let me call the front desk. Talk to Peggy Hill. <laughs> CBS Radio, WJFK. Hey, Peggy Hill. That's your new nickname, Peggy Hill. Mine? Yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah, you ever watch King of the Hill? Uh, sometimes. I told Mike today, I said, our receptionist, she is a dead ringer for Peggy Hill. Peggy Hill from uh, from King of the Hill. Oh, really? Especially when I came around the corner today, <laughs> and I caught her in the corner, and she was just doing these little stretches, like exercises. <laughs> I came around the corner, I said, what are you doing? She says, I'm stretching my back. I just have to stretch my back, just like Peggy Hill would say. <laughs> right. yeah, there's that little Peggy Hill accent that we have here. You mind if we call you Peggy Hill? That's fine. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, listen, uh, is Charlie Rossi out there? Are you Charlie Rossi? Are you Charlie Rossi? No. No, it's no. not him. Oh, too bad. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye. bye Peggy Hill. Bye.
<laughs> hey, that's a nickname that'll stick. That is absolutely Peggy. Uh oh, hold on a second. Emergency call here. Yes. Hello. Hello. Are you really calling to Mary Vince? No. I was calling to tell you that I think that you and Mike should uh, have your wives in the studio and renew your wedding vows. Oh, oh please. Kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> what kind that? of a call is that? <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. My wife's already on her way to the beach. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I did that once already. <laughs> Hello. And I'm, Hello. I'm a newlywed still, for God's sake. Besides, who wants to listen to us get married to our wives? That's right. Maybe to our next wives we'll have those weddings on the air. <laughs> you, want, <laughs> you want to have a real wedding. You want to have right. a real deal, not a rehash. Hello. Hello. Donna Mike Show. How you doing? Hey, we're great, thank you. Hey, I know what's going on there. Yeah. They were a one-faced bitch. Oh, a little Tommy Matola. Okay, thank you. Yeah, way to work that in. It, it fit It fit real well, too. Fit like a glove. All right, that wasn't Charles Rossi that was coming in. You were Now, you were optimistic, weren't you? He was a, was he a semi-normal looking guy? Yeah, pretty okay. normal looking guy. All right. That's what, that should have been my first clue that wasn't Charles Rossi. <laughs> I bet he's a big old weirdo. Some guy come walking down the street that looked like that guy with the uh, elephantitis of the scrotum that we saw yesterday. <laughs> oh, and listen. Yes, the movie room is open on today's show, too. <laughs> Thanks to our friends at Blockbuster. If only I had my bell. Now that I don't have my bell, I need my bell. My bell, where's the bell? Um, thanks to uh, our friends at Blockbuster Video. <laughs> oh, no, that's a wimpy bell. <laughs> no, that's our boxing bell. That bell won't work either. No, that's... Rob, that's our town crier bell. Hear ye, hear ye. No. <laughs> Well, listen, Blockbuster Video was nice enough to uh, bring me by a copy of the Zapruder uh, film. That is the newly enhanced version of uh, the Kennedy assassination. Sure is. So we'll be uh, watching that on today's show. I don't know. I mean, I've seen it, and I know you've seen it before. And uh, I still had visions of that man with the uh, giant scrotum <laughs> last night. That was that. And it was great when we got everybody in the room, wasn't it? Watching oh, and we watched uh, Band in America. Band in America with a great highlight at the end, the man with the giant beanbag. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, how about a man marrying that guy? A man marrying Vince? Are you interested? No, 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 no. Uh, the other guy you have coming in for tomorrow. Marrying, I think Charlie Rossi is a hetero. Oh, okay. Because okay. I thought he was gay. Oh, you're talking, are you talking about Vincent? No. Oh, no, Charles hold on, Rossi. hold on. All right, wait a minute. See, I'm at the advantage because I can see people coming in the studio. Is Charlie Rossi coming into the building now? All right, I just saw a weirdo come in. <laughs> hey, hold on, thank you. Let me call Peggy Hill back, all right? You know, sad to say, I don't even know this nice lady's name. She's a temp that's working our front desk. Real Walk nice, real nice lady. While Coletta's out. Uh huh. Peggy. Hey, uh, Peggy. Hi. Peggy. Peggy Hill. Hey, what's your first name, sweetheart? Really? Yeah. Vicky. All right, Vicky. Yeah. All right, Vicky. Can we? Cut? I mean, all the time now. When, when see, when we give somebody a nickname, it's like a uh, a term of endearment, but we like to use it all the time. And do you mind if we call you Peggy, like all the time? That's fine. Just us. Peggy Hill. Peggy. Okay. Peggy Hill. Okay. Peggy Hill. The weird-looking guy that just walked in, is he Charles Rossi? No, it was the same guy that was here when you asked last time. No, 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 I just saw another guy. Well, he didn't come in here. Oh, he didn't come in here. Uh -uh. Oh. oh, man. All right. Thanks, Peggy Hill. Okay, you're welcome. Any messages for us? <laughs> no, Don and Mike, I'm afraid not. We're so sensitive now. Three times burned. I know. I was really sad about oh, yesterday. Oh, and P Peggy Hill was telling me the other day that she was thinking she's going to have to stay after work on Friday to watch the, the big wedding. Absolutely, absolutely. I was going to dress up. Oh, man, so many people got excited about this. It's a real disappointment. Well, listen, do put on your finest Kathy Lee fabrics and do join us tomorrow, Peggy Hill. Okay, I sure will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, That's Vicky, alias Peggy Hill. Yeah, I've spied her wearing the Kathy Lee line, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I can spot the discriminating woman that yeah. sports the Kathy Lee Gifford line of clothing. Well, I've always said you have an eye for quality. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Yeah, I'm a Catholic mailman, and I just read the uh, Arlington Herald, and they condemned Lethal Weapon 4, and they did not condemn something about Mary. Are you what? talking about, you, you say you're a Catholic mailman? Yeah. And there's a, does the diocese come out with like uh, movies that they recommend and movies that they don't? Right. You're okay. a Catholic mailman. How do I get a Catholic mailman? I pray to God. <laughs> I don't know what religion my mailman is. He prays to the God of money. Uh, at least that's what you were explaining uh, before. That Oh, uh, uh, you got to tip the mailman. The great all-American dollar. Catholic mailman. How about that? And what were you saying? Do you only, do, listen, do you only deliver mail to Catholics? No, I'm uh, non-denominational. So you deliver to Episcopalians, Jews, Protestants. Would you deliver to an atheist? Uh, hope to God I would. 
<laughs> I hope to God I would. <laughs> so are you saying that the church endorses something about Mary, but they don't endorse Lethal Weapon 4? Yeah, Lethal Weapon 4 got condemned, and Mary got uh, rated an A4. A4, that's A4. pretty... A4. Which is adults with... The, the Pope must have been drunk when he watched that movie. <laughs> that's all I can say. Pope all loaded go, oh... Oh, that's so funny! <laughs> I got to get in my pop car and see that again. Where's that videotape? Hey, that retard! <laughs> He's so funny! <laughs> hey, Mary! What's that in your hair? <laughs> <laughs> the Pope loves There's Something About Mary. <laughs> they use it right next to Joel Siegel. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. As a Catholic mailman, Mike. That's good. And it's nice to hear him uh, identify himself <laughs> as the Catholic mailman. Hello, Donna Mike. Yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, say? What's the matter with you, say? You got a problem, say? No, say. That's the way it's going to be, see? That's the way it's going to be. What are you talking about, see? Come on, say something, see? Hey, listen, yeah, we, need a, we need a girl. Like, how about your sister, see? To marry one of these guys. She like Charles A. Rossi. See, what do you say about that, see? Yeah, see? Yeah, see? see? Torpedoes is what I need, see? We got Charlie Rossi. He's going to be at the altar. We need some help, see? Come on now. Get some of your torpedoes down here. Go take a powder and get these guys ready to marry Charlie Rossi, see? See? Yeah, I hope he's not a copper, see? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, listen, copper, listen. Tracy let us down, see? She let Vince down, man. See? Poor Vince, see? Yeah, he's all ready to marry the convenience store guy, and then he takes a powder. Say. Say. Yeah, say. 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 Goodbye. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah all that right. you know that runs out of just about that time. See. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don. Yes, I am. Hello. Hey, what's going on, homeboy? Hey, buddy. What's going on, homeboy, Mike? What's up, G? What's up, homeboy? Hey, G Money. True that. True that. True that. Hey, what's going on, man? What up? Hey, I wanted to tell you guys the trifecta has been completed, man. Yeah, it's fat, man. <laughs> huh? It's fat. It's done? It's fat, man. You know, but fat. Oh, okay, fat. All right, fat ass. <laughs> Come on, you don't you don't even understand the lingo. Yeah, I do, man. What does fat mean, Don? Hey I don't know. It means good, Mike. It means good. Hey, Something's you're a fat. bad father, Don. Oh, that means good. No, you're um, a bad father. I'm that a bad means you're father. a bad father. That's why I called. <laughs> what? Naughty Naughty Don, you're a bad father. Oh, F you. F you and F your family. Now, this started out with all that lovely street lingo, and it started out so pleasant, and now it's I'm taken psycho. it decidedly. My personality changed. I have 32 personalities. Do you really? I have 32. Let's uh, let's speak to the biggest a-hole of the group. Well, I, thought we, I thought we just were. <laughs> That's right. We already are. No, you're about. a bad father, Don. All right, I tell you what. I wish you were young enough I could adopt you. Bart is not coming back. I would send you to school in Switzerland so fast your head would spin. <laughs> Don. Send him to a school where they were uh, cutting that guy's hands off. Hey, man, F you, man. F your family. All right, thanks for the call. This is my thanks. other personality. Yeah, all right, have a nice right. day. Bye-bye. F you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> what can I say, Mike? You know, I got my fans. <laughs> They're all out there lining the streets right Hello. now. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike show. And then, Fat, P-H-A-T. And inevitably, after we get a call like that, we have a nice big chunk of dead air when there's someone not on the line so we can pause and reflect on his kind words. Right. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, that guy was an effort, see? Yeah, an effort. Say? Say. Hello. Ah, uh, send him uh, to <laughs> Africa, see? Get his feet cut off, see? Donaldo E. Miguel, hello. Yeah, hi, my name's Dan. Yes, hello, Dan. Uh, I was just calling. I noticed you guys were having some problem with uh, the wedding. And I figured, I already talked to my fiance. She said we'd be willing to come down there and get married tomorrow if you guys can't get anybody for Charlie Rossi. She's already got the dress. So you're, I mean, this is your, your legitimate wedding? Dead serious. Well, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll I... We'll tomorrow, 5.30. I appreciate it, but, but no, not unless you want to dump your fiance and marry a stranger. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not that we don't like you guys, but it's lack of spontaneity, you see. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you want to help the show. And you want, if you want to know the truth, we've had a whole bunch of people call, including a producer at Channel 7 that mm -hmm. wants right. to get married in, in the spot. But no, listen, if it's Charles Rossi standing there with a blow-up woman, <laughs> tomorrow there's going to be a wedding here. Okay. That blow-up woman just came into your head, yeah. didn't it? I thought mannequin first. Yeah. I think blow-up woman, a blow nice blow-up girl. That's right. And then maybe you can go up to the roof and let her free. All right. Well, I just figured, you know, we'd offer... Uh, uh, well, I appreciate it, sir. It's no problem. I mean, if, if everything falls through, you guys can keep it as a backup. That's fine. All right. Well, listen, if Charles Rossi is marrying the invisible girl, there will be a, a wedding tomorrow with him. Hey, where are all the chicks that want to get married tomorrow on the show? Hey, we got a hot property named Rossi. Hello, Don and Mike. 
Hi. Hi. I'll, uh, I'll throw my wife and get married if you give me a good girl. Uh, much as I'd like to help you, sir. <laughs> stay with that Stay with that lucky gal you're with right now. Yeah, and you're in for a great weekend now. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don. Hey, Mike. Hi there. Uh, to, to clear up the query about the what fat stands for, it's pretty hot and tempting. What? Pretty hot and tempting. P-H-A-T. Yeah. Hot right. and tempting. Right. So right. That's, that's a fat lady? Not she sings. <laughs> Is that what hot and tempting? <laughs> the, it's P-H-A-T. Pretty hot. Some of those Victoria's Secret mo models are really fat. <laughs> hey, listen. Um, <clears throat> Hello. Oh, she's fat. God, she's fat. <laughs> she's fat the old way. Old school fat. <laughs> oh, while I've got you on here, I wanted to tell you, Don and Mike, you both looked very, very nice on TV yesterday. I oh, listen, you. I was so embarrassed. That Channel 9 shot. Anybody that's ever wondered how much hair I'm losing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> check it out, man. That, ain't, that camera angle on one of them was like from the floor looking up at your butt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I don't mind because I think I, I got a pretty nice looking butt now that I've lost all this weight. Thank you, Rob. It was pretty interesting, though, seeing that, you know, that where well, you that camera person, I give that camera person credit from Channel 9. She Oh, sure you will. She didn't show your butt or your bald spot. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she, from your head I, to your chin, Don. I don't have all. a bald spot. My hair <laughs> grows. grows. Yeah, she was like scrambling all over the floor and getting all these weird camera angles yesterday. Well, and, I thought you guys looked great. Both oh, well, of you are very handsome. Thank you. We appreciate that. Listen, let's cut to it. Do you want to get married to Vince or Charles? Oh, honey, I would, except I'm already married. Oh, honey. Oh, honey, child. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Honey. Mmm. You're looking too good. <laughs> Hello, honey, child. <laughs> Don and Mike. Hello. 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 Hello, honey child. Hello. 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 I want to offer my uh, I want to offer my sister to you. Ah, uh, come on, talk in your real voice, and maybe I'll accept your sister. Really? I mean, she's okay. <laughs> I mean, she she's not the greatest looking, but I mean, she's she's pretty cool. All right, send her down. Thank you. Yeah, brothers always and sisters always love that when their brother sets them up to get married. Hello, Don and Mike. How are you doing? Well, you know, maybe uh, we're doing great. Maybe we'll get all of the tonnage of the calls with the gals. They want to get married tomorrow once Mr. Rossi's actually here and they can yeah. sample the goods. Yeah, once uh, we get a little example of his live on air personality. Mm, then watch out, chicks. Hello? It's going to yeah. be a Rossi world. Question. Yes. I've been out of live for about a week and I'm just trying to find out what's going on with Susan and the marriage and everything. Oh, come on. Please. You know, wait until the book comes out. You're, you're so far behind. I can't. Well, I've, I've been out of the loop. I've been I've been out away from the the reception of the radio. Well, you're yeah. gonna have to. We so much has and happened. Who's, whose fault is that? We've it's come to work fault, every. But the question is, is right. it on or is it off? Is what on or off? The marriage. Have what you is, been listening to the show today at all? Dude, I just tuned in. I, that's what I'm asking. Dude, we can't <laughs> recap everything that's happened for you, dude. No, all I want all I want you to do is answer: Is the marriage on or off? Yes or no? What marriage? Susan and whoever. You're so far behind. Yeah, and, and now it's <laughs> like you're, this is kind of a power trip for you that you want us to give us this, uh, give you this answer. No. We Thank won't you. tell you. No, I would, that wasn't no as in yes or no. That's no as in we will not tell you. Yeah, we're not going to tell you. Because you heard our, listen. No, no. You heard our feelings. We are here doing the show for you. And what was so important that you had to leave the area and couldn't listen? I, I work for a living, and I... I don't want to hear that. Work. I don't want to hear that. Do you know that. how many people have become unemployed so just so they can listen to this show during the day? Yeah, here, here. All right, goodbye now. Okay, so he wasn't happy, but hey, that's that's the price he has to pay. <laughs> listen to the show is like joining the Army. Absolutely. You're in, and you're in. Well, you're AWOL. Okay? Let's listen. It's like a soap opera. Just listen for five minutes, and you'll figure out everything that's going on. Of course. Hello, Don and Mike. Uh, Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to know if you guys have ever heard of a screensaver called Bill's Pie Toss. No. How old are you? Thirteen. Ah, uh, not old enough to get married. And not old enough to call the show. Oh. Right. Are you a little boy or a little girl? Boy. Yeah. Really? You're a boy? No way. Yeah. Oh, hey, the Vienna Boys Choir is in your future. <clears throat> what's, you, what's your name? Joe. Nika, nika, nika. <laughs> when I need someone just to be with, to talk with, <laughs> I love Jeremy. <laughs> I don't know why, but I've got you pegged as a future Jeremy Coleman of America. Good luck. Uh -huh. 
That means you're going to be a fancy lad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jeremy's sitting up there right now with his Buster Brown suit on. Wearing his, uh, you know, with his book bag, his leather fancy book bag. And you know how Austin Powers dressed? Mm-hmm. Jeremy occasionally will dress like that also. Yeah, but always with the Buster Brown shoes <laughs> with the big buckles on them, like the Pilgrims wore. Fancy lad. He's a fancy lad. Hello. Hello. Don and Mike show. Oh, we haven't even done a stop set yet. No, nope, we haven't. Oh, we got to do that. What did you want? Real fast, fast please. Um, I, I blinked. What happened with uh, what happened to with, uh, the wedding that was all scheduled? Vince and I were all tied up and ready. Oh, are, are these the late sleepers that are calling us right now? <laughs> the show starts at 3 o'clock, 12 noon, West Coast time. Please be here. <laughs> I came back from lunch and it was gone. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, you know, maybe next time you don't have that extra bacon cheeseburger and you tune into the show. <laughs> Listen, sorry, you got to get up to speed on your own. Thank you. All right. All right, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, come on. You can try. You can listen a little harder than that. <laughs> lazy, lazy, lazy. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. It's happening all across America. Phones are ringing all across America. People are no longer saying talk is cheap. Not about him. Oh, I've known him since he's a little boy. Oh, well, <laughs> oh man, little Chucky Rossi. <laughs> Would you recommend someone marrying him? Oh, sure. Why? Oh, he's just a nice kid. Really? He really, he's a nice kid, hardworking. Yeah. Why do you think uh, little Chucky Rossi's <laughs> marriages go down in flames? Who knows? You, nobody ever really knows what goes on behind closed doors. Right. You know. What have you heard, though? I, I really haven't heard anything. I'm a friend of his. Do you think the wives of Chucky e. Rossi might have a problem with the in-laws? It seems to me that uh, when we had a little experience with Chucky e. Rossi's family... Family was a little overbearing. Absolutely. Oh, they, they're yellers and screamers. They're yellers and screamers. Yeah. How would you rate Charlie Rossi on a 1 to 10 scale? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, I think she's answered that question. Oh, God. Jeez, I don't know. Oh, come on, be honest. I, I, he's a, a seven and a half. Hey, that's a pretty good rating. Yeah, he's he's really a nice guy. I like him, and I like his family. I like all his sisters and his mom. This is and his good. Dad. Yeah. This is good. This is an endorsement for little Chucky e. Ross. Yeah. And what would you say to the prospective gals out there who are thinking that they should get their act together so they can be the first to marry Charles Rossi. What, what would you say to them? Oh, they have to be a, a strong and a little bit more overbearing than he is if they want their opinion and, uh, known and appreciated. Oh, man. I tell you, oh, you need yeah. to get a doctor's <laughs> prescription to take care of that. You have to be a strong woman, I think, to be a married to any one of the Rossies. Oh, all right. I think we've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I wonder if he has uh, tapped into the uh, Carlo Rossi fortune. Hello. I like drinking it. Don Mike Show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always gets back to alcohol with me. Hello. Is Charles Rossi really desperate? Well, he's coming down to get married on the show to a total stranger. Well, you may consider a mail order bride. A mail order bride? We don't have the time. Huh? They don't, you can't get like an overnight service on FedEx. <laughs> From, uh, for a nice mail order bride, FedEx. <laughs> she arrives in a big box. Put her in a box, <laughs> and a, fly her to Memphis, <laughs> and then fly her out of Memphis. You know that's how they do that. <laughs> that if you get something from Federal Express, right? I wonder if it's like that if you live in Memphis and you order something. Mm -hmm. Do they f still fly it to the Memphis airport? Yeah, probably. That's where when you get something that's FedEx, the hub. Yeah, no matter where you get it from, right? If you order something in California and the factory's in California, yeah. the package goes all the way to Memphis and then comes all the way back to California. Well, that's not right. Hello. <laughs> How did you know that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Not a Mike show. What kind of planes do they use to I fly? I don't know. I don't know. Makes it taste good.